Okay, all right. So welcome to the next installment of the training from Agnes Sundor. And um, uh, we want to welcome Agnes tuning in from Grenoble as usual, although she will be here with us at UTS next month, which we're very excited about. Okay, um, Agnes is going to hand over to you so you can introduce us to the topic for today. Yes, uh, I, 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 I forgot again how to do it. Up, uh, it's uh, share, share screen. Yeah. Share screen. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, do you have my screen? Do you see it? Yes? Yes. 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 Okay. okay. Ah, I can hear myself. This is very bad. Okay. So, uh, so this time, hello, we, we are going to analyze output and errors. Um, oh, yes, output and errors uh, from the part uh, from the analysis. So here you see uh, again the. Um, um the the scheme of the course and now we are at the practical part we have gone through through uh theoretical and technical background uh, we saw the system architecture and tools we walked through the existing the existing analytical system and now we are going to analyze output and some errors from the analytical parser so uh, this will be the first part analytical parser and there will be a second part on the reflective parser but it's not going to be this time because there has been no introduction to the reflective parser yet. So this will be for the next time, uh, there will be a, a, an introduction to that. And then we are going to see the output of the reflective parser. Now, uh, we are going to analyze the abstract of an article, which might be familiar to Simon. Uh, it's here. Understanding students' learning dispositions has been a focus for research and education for many years, etc., etc. We are going to go through every sentence of this, and we 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 see uh, what uh, how how to analyze, how to interpret the parser's output for for these sentences. There have been a few errors in it, and uh, I will show how the errors can be very, very easily corrected. And now after the correction, all the sentences are correctly analyzed. So first of all, let, let us look at the file, uh, the output file. So this is the output file of, um, of, of all the sentences. Now it is a lot of lines, a lot of things. So uh, first it, for every sentence, uh, the, the parser, uh, segments the text in sentences. And the first line for every sentence is the sentence itself. And the sentences are um, uh, cut with, with these uh, dashes. So, every, uh, so uh, um, this series of dashes begins a new sentence. So until here, it is the analysis of the same sentence. And this output, is the integration of the output of the um, uh, Stanford parser and the rules that have been written on top of the Stanford parser. So what belongs to the Stanford parser? Here you see these lines. There will be another file where I, I, I show it highlighted. So these things are the dependencies uh, that are output by the Stanford parser. And the rules on top of these dependencies will say which of these dependencies are relevant, which are called key sentence word dependencies. So which of these dependencies are relevant for the rhetorical meaning? So, uh, and these are the key sentence word dependencies, which are usually, usually at the beginning. The order of these uh, output lines is I think it depends on the order of the rules. So it, is, it, it doesn't mean anything else, this order. So the last rule is first. So you see here that this is an important sentence. So uh, whatever, I, I don't know, we, we, I don't know how, what you call it in the, uh, in, in the interface, in the tool itself, 
uh, in, in, the, in the parser gives it the, the, the label imsent, important sentence. And so this is an important sentence because it has a key sentence word dependencies in it. And these dependencies are dependencies that come from the Stanford parser. These lines come from the Stanford parser. The key sentence words dependencies come from the analytical parser. And every dependency which has uh, a feature like GRN, grammar analytical, it is a dependency that was created on top of the Stanford parser. Uh, for example, here, uh, understanding students' learning dispositions has been a focus for re research in education. The Stanford parser doesn't make a dependency be between research and education. And so, uh, this, uh, because it was important for some uh, rule, this dependency has been created. And this is um, a legitimate dependency. But sometimes there may be errors on this level as well. Sometimes uh, the new dependency, uh, there may be errors, uh, of course, with the uh, Stanford dependencies and with any dependencies, there may be errors. So what is important for us is that the whole overall sentence is an important sentence based on the key sentence word dependencies. And here are um, the Stanford dependencies. And there is an other, so, what, uh, the lines beginning with the D something are not in, interesting for us. So it's, it's not something that you need to use or need to take care of. Um, and what, what are interesting are the syntactic dependencies between the words and the dependencies that are called sin. It is, it is for syntactic node. It is the sin dependencies are it's 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 technically it's a dependency but 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 it is a it, it is it is a node it is the words that constitute the sentence so for example sin so this is in order understanding uh, this dependency this um, uh, displays all the features that have been given to the word understanding. So this is the uh, sin dependency has one argument only, it is understanding the word. And here uh, you see all the dependent, all the features that both the Stanford parser and um, our uh, Atenor parser has assigned to the word understanding. And here you see also the lemma. The lemma of understanding is understand. You know now what a lemma is. It's the dictionary base form. And it has a number of dependencies, uh, a number of features. And what is important for us is that it is a key search word, understanding, and it is a mental and uh, et cetera. So these are the only things that are important for us, the sentence dependency, the key search word dependencies, the Stanford parser dependencies, and the syntactic nodes. And the other things, here there are a number of other things as well. These are the constituent structure of the sentence, but we don't use it in the word. We, we, we don't use them in the rules, so they are not important. So whenever I, 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 I look at the, the output of, of, um, of the parser, I don't look at these. I, I just uh, uh, make a grep from, from uh, the things that I'm interested in, and, and this is what I use. So is this clear? Yes? Okay. So now I go to another file, which is uh, where, where uh, I highlight in the original file, in, in the original output file of, of these sentences, what are the important things to look at. So, in the first sentence, what is, um, uh, what, 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 um, what are the, the words that carry the rhetorical meaning? 
it is understanding has been a focus for research. This is what is important, uh, at least from <laughs> according to this analysis. So this is an important sentence, and its labels are old, emph, and tempstad. Now, this is all for historical reasons, old and tempstad together, it is the background knowledge. So this sentence speaks, speaks about, about the background. Fun. Just remind us what, why, why, what tempstad what that was to do with? Well, it's just the name oh, of, a, it's a temporal, it, it means that it is a temporal, a uh, temporal word. So, uh, I mean, here the temporal is has been, and uh, and that it is an old because there are, in temporality there is old and new. Yes. When when you uh, both are temporal, so I I I, I call it uh, this way. Uh, so this is so these two have been mapped into into. Um, uh, background and it is emphasis also because it's a focus a focus is an emphasis so how where does it come from it comes this annotation comes from two key search word dependencies one is between focus and research right which is based on the the the, the stanford parser uh, nominal modifier dependency, focus, and research, and uh, the focus and understanding, uh, which comes from the uh, subject dependency, uh, focus and understanding. And, and, and you can um, uh, admire the, uh, the Stanford parser that it finds that understanding is a subject of focus because it is really really a very complicated sentence from this point of view it is a uh, it is a, a complex sentence and it does find that understanding is the subject of focus it is it is very subtle uh, i mean it, it it's it's really nice so um uh when you look at this one focus and research it, the, the important, so what I, what, what I, what I put in bold in, 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 for every sentence is the relevant features, everything that is relevant for this sentence. So here you have the words focus and research, and here you have the sin dependencies. So that means the, the, the features of all these words, understanding, focus, and research, which are important. And Understanding has the, uh, ah, I didn't uh, put everything in, uh, in, in bold, but uh, well, the, the, the MD, it, it means that it is a meta discourse word. It is a feature that allows us to put in bold these words in the output. And uh, so understanding is a mental, uh, it has, 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 has the mental feature. And it also has, of course, the key sentence word feature. So these are the important features here. And, but, um, okay, and here, uh, focus has the feature. I, I, I'm really sorry for these um, different words and um, uh, <laughs> be, 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 because, it, be, because of history, I, 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 we have these and it's difficult maybe to, uh, to remember them, but um, and and this can be changed. So in 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 a sentence, it was called tempstat because of some reasons, and for the words, it was time time fact. And uh, and why is it old? So the the reason why a focus here has the feature old, it is because of a rule. Actually, I I should have copied the rule here, which says that. Um, be, because of has been the focus, because um, has been a focus, because it is the present perfect, and the present perfect here means that it is old. And this has been integrated, the old feature has been integrated to among the features of focus only in this sentence. So focus will not have the old feature in another sentence when it is not has been the focus. 
so uh, so this sentence uh, ha has the uh, is background knowledge and emphasis because of these features and you see a, f a focus has the feature uh, where is it where is the emphasis I can see it yeah importance so it is importance uh, that is the feature that gives emphasis. Focus, the word, has the feature importance. And also you see that both these um, uh, dependencies are so-called weak dependencies, weak, weak, because if they were alone, they wouldn't be uh, important enough. So this is the analysis of this first sentence. Let's go on to the next sentence. A range of alternative approaches to conceptualizing and measuring this broad construct have been developed. So what is important here is that a range of alternative approaches developed. But, uh, and, and so what is the analysis of this sentence? Here you don't see in impsent. Uh, when a sentence is not impsent, then it is a sent. It is simply a sent. It is what, what I put in, um, in italics are the words that haven't been um, uh, correctly analyzed. And so this, in this sentence, a range of alternative approaches developed. They haven't been uh, analyzed as a, uh, uh, no, not everything has been correctly analyzed because in this sentence we only have one key search word dependency, alternative approaches. But alone alternative approaches is not enough uh, to make it into an important sentence because, um, uh, because uh, the sentence could speak about something else as well. It could speak about a, a, a alternative approaches to uh, food preparation. And this wouldn't be interest, important. So we need another important dependency for this to be uh, uh, an important sentence. But the parser didn't find it. And the reason why it didn't find it, so by looking at this output, you can see the, what the reason is. So the reason is that it only finds approaches. Uh, it, it only finds the alternative approaches um, uh, dependency, but it doesn't find uh, uh, developed that these approaches were developed because it is this development that indicates that it is it is a knowledge level um, uh, approach, right? Uh, uh, are you following Hello. this? Hello. Yes. Good. Um, okay. Yeah. So, if if it had picked up that connection, would you have classified this as um, a, a sort of background sentence, which is documenting prior work? Well, uh, in this case, this sentence has no label at all. No, I know. But if are you saying that we might? Yes should have been classified as exactly an... exactly so this is a silence from our point of view and i will show you i i actually i i uh, added a rule and now it is well analyzed and i show you how so you okay. see here the, the here so what I, I i show you how i set to this task uh, what what are the important things here here i see that there is just one key sentence words dependency and one is missing from this sentence so i look at the words i look at the the depend well we see uh, uh, the the words that are important and the dependencies that are important and here what is important is that it is a range of alternative approaches that are developed and the word range is not taken into consideration uh, at at this point so i looked at the word range and range has the feature transparent, which means that, um, uh, so this word may be uh, the subject or object of something, but it is not really this word that is important 
in, in this relationship, but one to which it is, it, it, it is related. So it is the alternative approaches that have been uh, developed, not the, not a range. A range, it's, it, this is something that qualifies, modifies the alternative approaches, but it is not themselves. Uh, uh, if, if, so these, these words like a kind of, a range of, a, a, a part of, or there is a collection of these words in the lexicon, which I called transparent, because whenever we say something about them, it's not about them that we say something, but about the other words that they are related to. But there was no, and, and what, what's more, I can see that the parser does create a dependency between range and develop, which is again, uh, a very nice thing. So a range of alternative approaches have been developed. So it, you, you see, it is a subject passive, uh, uh, nominal, uh, passive subject of uh, range is the nominal passive subject of develop. So what is needed is to, uh, to, to link range to approaches. And this is what I did. So I, I added some, some rules where I marked that it, these rules have been added for the fifth training course. And here I put the sentence which uh, triggered this rule and I say that what I want to do if I have a transparent noun which is a um, which um, uh, is related to a scope word like approaches a range of approaches I have a, a modifier relationship between range and approach and I have a case relationship between approach and of. So whenever I see a range of approaches or a kind of uh, uh, theory or anything, so whenever you have a transparent word here and a scope word, then, uh, and also uh, the of, de of uh, dependency here, then I will assign the same feature, scope and uh, key search word, to this transparent word. So it inherits the features of the word that, uh, that is important here. So here we will have, um, uh, well, what is it here? Ah, yes. Um, so uh, if we, we go back here to the word approach, Approach has the, 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 um, the feature scope, and it also have the feature wide scope. Wide scope is about words which um, we speak about uh, a broad uh, category of research output, like theory or things like that, um, um, as opposed to, uh, I don't know, uh, development or other words. No, I, I don't remember now. So other words which are, which are not so, uh, so broad in meaning, like advances or I, I, I don't know. So th not all of the, uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I, don't, uh, I don't have the files with me now, but some, so, some words have these and this, this uh, feature has importance in some rules. So anyway, I, I, I want to say if, this word, if uh, this other word has also the, the feature wide scope, then the transparent word should also have a feature uh, wide scope. So now the output is uh, correct. There will be a contrast. A range of alternative approaches have been developed. It will be contrast. Uh, because there will be three dependencies which will be taken into consideration. For this, the alternative approaches uh, developed developed range, but range is not so important, and range and approaches. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
conceptually uh, yeah uh, I still don't have my my head around all of the syntax there are so many variables on the screen etc that uh, uh, what what uh, syntax well I mean there are there are so many different um, uh, variables that are being listed out there and you know, but um, I haven't been editing so, these kinds of files myself, but um, okay. I, I can see conceptually what you've been doing. I don't know whether Ming has any questions. Yeah, so it, yeah, it, there are many things here. So this is why I put in bold whatever is relevant for us because the rest is not important. So what is important is that there are, um, the, these are the Stanford Plaza um, syntactic relationships. Uh, these are the uh, the features of the words, and these these are so. This is here the the key sentence words dependencies are the duplicates of the Stanford parser dependencies enriched with the rules with with the um, with the features given by uh, uh, the parser, the rules, the grammar rules. So here you have. Uh, uh, alternative approaches, and here you also have alternative approaches. This is the Stanford puzzle output, because a range of alternative approaches. So there is uh, um, alternative is a modifier of approaches, and the puzzle recognizes it like an adjective modifier. And uh, and because approaches and alternatives have important uh, features, like approaches is scope and alternative is contrast. So there is a contrast here, a contrast uh, um, yeah. uh, uh, relationship. And so using these, we will say if there is a word that has contrast and one that has scope, then it is an, an important dependency. And here we create a new dependency, we create it. So we don't add anything to this, we, we keep it as it is. We create a new dependency and we assign to this new dependency. So here what you see here, these are the features of the dependency. And here you see the, depend uh, the features of the words. It is, it is confusing. <laughs> and... Um, so what uh, the, the form, the form of a dependency is its name. Then you have its features, and then you have its uh, arguments. Yeah. And here, features are due to the features of the words. And here, in the sin dependencies, you have the name of the dependency, its only argument, and all its features. So whenever you see in, uh, things in angle brackets, these are features, and the features are assigned either to words or to, depend to, to dependencies. When you see the, the, the angle brackets after the dependency name, these are the features of the dependency. Is it clearer? Yeah, in the square brackets. Um, All right, I, I, can I ask one question? Yes, of course. Yeah. So, uh, key sentence word dependency um, highlighted in the green color. So, these are yes. features. Mental the scope, part one, scope, mental scope, weak, control. So, that's a yes. feature for these dependencies. Right. Um, these features are derived actually from the individual words exactly like, they are derived exactly Upload. they are derived from the dependence uh, from the features of the words so here these dependencies here approaches men's code type blah 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 they are not features of the sin dependency but they are features of the word approaches yes so alternatives also have some features as well right right uh, you are right, and I didn't copy alternative here. It's okay. missing. <laughs> and so this key 
sentence word dependency features is actually the is kind of how to, so how this feature is derived is kind of a combination or aggregation of these two words word yeah, yeah 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 exactly so so in the rules when i uh, when i describe the rules then uh, uh, there there is one phase when uh, i create I create a key search word dependency, and it will be the same for the reflective parser. It is exactly the same. So I, I create a, a dependency where both words are key search words. This is the first step. So here, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I will go back here and find this. Uh, um, uh, the alternative, I, 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 where is alternative? Uh, uh, this is the next sentence. Uh, uh, yes, alternative. So I take this as well. Copy. Paste. So you here you have alternative, alternative, and it is contrast. So I, I create a dependencies where where both words are key search words. I create the dependency key search word dependency, and then I say if in a key search word dependency one of the words has contrast, then the dependency itself will have the feature contrast because it is the, the features of these dependencies which will allow me to create the important sentence dependency. Is it clear? So yes. we go from yes. the, the features of the words, the features of the, we'll give the features of the dependencies and the features of the dependencies is the features of the sentence. So Agnes, if uh, we had a sentence that read um, a group of diverse approaches uh -huh. has been developed. It would uh, be the same. It, it sh would this rule need, would, would it work as it stands, but is it, it is, or is it locked to the, the lexicon term alternative? Uh, so this is why I created semantic classes. So uh, the, the feature transparent is assigned to words which belong to the same semantic class and group belongs to the same semantic class as range. Yeah. Like yeah. this kind of, and if it is, if it is in the lexicon, and I think it is, then it would cover it. If it is not in the lexicon, it would be added. And it is exactly here that machine learning could help a lot. Because in my case, I constituted the lexicon manually. And I think that, um, so um, for the uh, uh, analytical parser, um, the lexicon is, 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 um, is more restricted than for the re reflective parser. So finding, th there, there are not so many words. So range or, or these kinds of transparent words, uh, well, they, they are easy to gather uh, by hand. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but maybe there are some that are missing. But for example, range was already in the lexicon. You see, it is transparent. But there might be other kinds of words which today with the um, uh, word similarity um, uh, measures and uh, deep learning, they can be acquired very, very well. And actually what I'm working on now uh, at Naver, we do use this. So what we do is we do this linguistic model, but to obtain the words, we, don't, we cannot do it by hand because it is very vast. So we are doing it with automatic acquisition of words. And I think in, in the reflective parser, it would be very, very good. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I will speak about it. Uh, when, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're very interested in the interplay between this this kind of rule based approach and and, and where machine learning can can fill in. Some yes. Of um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really very interesting. So, uh, so, so, is it clear now, Simon? Yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. Yeah. Okay. So, so we finished this sentence. Uh, we continue with the next one. Traditional psychometric measures aim to produce scales that satisfy the requirements for research. However, such measures have an additional use to provide formative feedback to the learner. So what is interesting here, I put some words into uh, uh, italics because these are words that are parts of the lexicon. That uh, means that they are important words. For example, traditional, here you see, traditional is old, has the feature old because it is traditional method. It could be, if it was traditional methods, uh, it, 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 it would be a background sentence. But here it is traditional psychometric measures. So measures for me is not a knowledge level word. It is a practical technical word for, uh, for this. It is traditional measures. I don't give it uh, the background status because I only give it to knowledge level thing because this is what I consider to be rhetorically salient. I don't say that it is in, uninteresting and it is not salient. I, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it, it could be also, uh, but, but if, 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 if I took such sentences, then, um, then it would, so the salience of the things that I give back would be less because it is not knowledge level, it is technical. And I, 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 I haven't handled this. So traditional psychometric measures, but, but uh, these traditional measures could be uh, highlighted for some, other, for some other purpose or in some other, um, uh, some other system, but not here. But here you have traditional measures. You have the word however. You have the word research and however. But since they are not at all syntactically related in the sentence, the sentence is not interesting from our point of view. So you have, we have here three words, traditional, research, and however, which could have been traditional research, said this, but however, and in this case, this would have been an important sentence. But in this case, it is not interesting for us. So it is just a sentence, right? And then the next sentence is, in this article, we reanalyze. So here, what, what I put in bold in the first sentence is, it is what uh, me as a human consider as the salient rhetorical part of the sentence. In this art article, we, reanal we reanalyze. It could be also data. It could be important as well. So, um, but this sentence has been tagged originally as contribution, which is the su our summary sentence, but it has missed reanalyze, which is a contrast. So here, the summary contribution was based on two dependencies. It is the article reanalyze and this article and article has the feature pub, uh, publication and uh, there is also the feature mental that can be in, in important here because analyzed is in the in is in the um, lexicon but it only has here you see reanalyze it only has the feature mental it doesn't have the feature contrast I, I really I really don't know how come it it is it, 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 how how this could be overlooked, but reanalyze didn't have the feature, so I added it. Sorry, I added I added it. feature. Yes. It, uh, reanalyze did not have the feature contrast. Is that what you said? Yeah, it did not have the feature contrast. It only had the feature mental, and I added contrast. That's interesting. So you. are you're saying that you think that when somebody reanalyzes something, that is connoting 
uh, some kind of tension or disagreement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I, 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 do you agree with this? I'm just thinking that through, but I think you're right, yeah. People in academic papers generally only reanalyze something because they're worried that there's a problem of some sort. Well, and uh, yes, and, and, and say something new about it. So I think it is a leap. When you reanalyze something, there is uh, a leap to something. Yes. Not, not necessarily, maybe. Maybe not necessarily. Hmm. That's interesting. So, I mean, that's that's a nice example of where you know the interpretation of the analyst has to come in exactly um, well also, yeah 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 but mm. uh I, I i i think it is a contrast sentence as well because you reanalyze something you have new results you have something new um with respect to what you used to have and and of course mm. also because it is the aim of your article in this article, we reanalyze 15 years of data. So. Yes, yes. That's in, I mean, that sentence itself is like a precursor to a claim of some sort. Exactly. It's not, it's not a it's not a knowledge level claim itself. I, you are right. It, you are it, right. It, it is it is setting the stage. So it's, yes. it's like it's like a, a, an advanced signal that something new is about to be said. Um, it might be, it might not be, I mean, we do, we, don't, we do not know, of course, what the outcome of the reanalysis is yet. It might be simply to confirm what was known before, or it might be to make something, to, to make some kind of novelty claim or some kind of contrast. So that's why I'm just sort of pondering this out loud as to whether the work, the, the expression that we are reanalyzing is itself a contrast sentence. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, any, that's right. But I think that the summary sentences are not knowledge level claims. It is the important sentences. Yes. Yes. In this, uh, we re we reanalyze in this article. Yeah, that is clearly a, a summary sentence um, about what is coming in the uh, in the article. Uh, yeah, well, I think I think uh, not all the summary sentences are uh, have have some contrast element, but well, I I think it is it is nice to say that there uh, in this summary sentence you say that you did something different. Mm. Yeah. But but really, it's up to you. If you don't want it, you you just uh, don't don't add contrast to reanalyze. Yeah, no, I just think this is a nice example to show the process that one goes through. So this is, this is fine, you know, and, and these are the kinds of decisions that must be made. Um, um, but at least they are, you know, explicit decisions which can be explained. Um, yes. Unlike a machine learning model, exactly. which would be much, much harder to, to explain. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, well, what, what I like what in, in, in what we are doing now, that we do have the linguistic, uh, the linguistic basis, so we can explain, but then how we acquire the words that we can't explain, but, but um, well, that's, that, that's fine, I think, because if, 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 if you see the structure, you can explain the structure, it's good already, but then you, you, you yeah, you don't have any hold on the words in itself. It should need some human supervision afterwards. Yeah. So uh, in, indeed, a, a, a hybrid method where you have the machine learning and, as input, but the humans hand on it, I think it's, it's really nice. Yeah. So, uh, so you see here, this is a, a summary sentence because you have this article this is deictic. Article is publication, and if you have deictic and publication, it is summary. So this article, and uh, we reanalyze. So it is. It is really a, a good summary sentence. Uh, and this sentence had another problem, <laughs> which 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 I, um, I I I realized as a problem that. Here we have the summary sentence, but the keywords, this article reanalyzed, 
did not have the meta discourse word feature so uh, these words wouldn't have been put in bold in the output couldn't have been put in bold because they didn't have this feature so um, this feature meta discourse is given at the very end this is the very last rule when i say that if you have an important sentence and in this important sentence, there is a key search word dependency, then both arguments of this key search word dependency should get the, uh, the feature meta discourse. So all the words that constitute the rhetorical expression will have the features meta discourse. So you can uh, uh, make them bold or highlight them in, an, uh, in, in some way to show these expressions. And I, I, I've just forgotten at the end to add this to summary sentences and imp summary sentences. And so I added it. And now they are also meta discourse words. Is it clear? So these words didn't have the feature meta discourse because there was a missing rule. I only added the words to important sentences, uh, the feature to important sentences, in important sentences, not in summary and in summary sentences. So uh, the new, new output is, now it is an in summary sentence, contribution and contrast. Because it, there is no new dependency created, it's just that the reanalyze has the feature contrast, and so the sentence also has the feature contrast. Can we go on? Ming, is it okay? I, I, I see you. Uh, is it okay, Ming? Yeah, 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 it's okay. Good, 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 good. good. Okay. That's it. <laughs> okay, okay. I just so the next one, yeah? Lock paper I will be tired. That's it. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. So we explore patterns and relationships within its practical measures and generate more robust, etc. etc. So we hear uh, there are some words uh, explore patterns and relationships uh, which were not considered to be important uh, enough. I mean, at, you, you do have. Uh, I, I didn't copy it here, but surely there is a relationship between explore and patterns, and ex uh, maybe not between explore and relationships. Anyway, uh, these are these are the important words. Explore. I don't understand why. Uh, uh, there is no keyword. I, I, I go back to the original file. We explore patterns. We explore. So now you see how I analyze it. Um, here, I, I will see, it's because explore is a keyword. And relationships is a, is a keyword. Let me see. Uh, explore, explore, we is a keyword, explore, and relationships, and mode as well. Where is mode? Uh, and, and research as well, and research. Um, ah, model, sorry, not mode, mod, model. We explore patterns and relationships within this blah, 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 and parsimonious measurement model. So model and research are clearly not related, but we explore relationships is related, explore relationships. So I look here if there is um, a dependency between explore and relationships. Here there are many, many things. It's hard to find. Uh, ex explore, no. 
Uh, and, okay, so there is a relationship between X. Oh, yes, there is one. Uh, yes, here it is a very good example. The Stanford parser made a relationship between explore and patterns. So remember the sentences uh, we explore patterns and relationships. We explore patterns and relationships. So there is uh, uh, patterns is the object of explore and relationship is also the object of explore but the Stanford parser doesn't extract it but it extracts a relationship with a, a conjunction relationship between patterns and relationships and so I created a new relationship based on these which is um, uh, so it, this relationship was created by the analytical parser, grammar analytical parser, between explore and relationships. Could you follow this? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, good. But uh, I didn't create a key sentence word dependency here, I will see because I think both, I, I don't know why. Uh, no, in this sentence, there was no key sentence word direct. I, I think uh, 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 originally there was, but since alone, we explore relationships is very weak. And in this sentence, there was nothing else. So there, in, in this sentence, uh, there is no contrast, no salient rhetorical feature. Just, it's a, it is a description of, of what they did. We explore patterns and relationships. So this sentence was uninteresting. Then the next one is, we show relevant research uh, and ideas hitherto treated. These are the important things. So we show how the constructs and included in the model link to relevant research and how it serves to integrate a number of ideas that have hitherto been treated as separate. So this is a very important sentence. Here we have ideas hitherto treated as separate. It means that really, really uh, radically new ideas. And we show something. So this is a, contra uh, a contribution. And there is relevant research, which is emphasis. So what what does so what what is the uh, the uh, label of this sentence? It is contrast. There is a contrast because ideas hitherto treated is contrast. It is uh, also tempstart and old because. Uh, it has have been hitherto, so there is some background old knowledge. And uh, it is contribution because we show, and it is emphasis because it is relevant research. So it has all these multiple uh, uh, labels based on these dependencies that the idea is treated, treated hitherto, research relevant, and we show. Yes, so it is, it is very nice, I think, because here you have a long sentence with different segments which are uh, all relevant. Uh, here, the next sentence is, the new model suggests a view. These are the important words. So it is a new model, so it is a novelty, a Novstat, it's, it's called Novstat, new model suggests a view, which is based on the key sentence words dependencies, new model, suggests view, and uh, suggests model. It's the model that suggests, uh, and it suggests a view, and uh, it's, uh, it, the model is new. So these are the key sentence words dependencies based on, uh, ah, this is, uh, this is not important based on the um, on the Stanford positive dependencies. 
Okay, so uh, there is nothing very special about this sentence. Can I go on? Yes, good. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, good. So here, learning dispositions reflect the ways in which we deliver, we develop resilient agency, etc., and engage with uh, um, this flow of energy and information in order to engage with challenge, risk, and uncertainty. This is an interesting example mm -hmm. because it has very interesting words. It has reflect, it has we, it has develop, it has challenge. So you see, if 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 you work with a bag of words method this sentence would surely be selected because it has a lot of contrast words. Challenge and, but these words have no syntactic relationship whatsoever. And here you see, for example, uh, among them. And here you have the word challenge, which has nothing to do with the challenge in research because is, is challenge uh, in general. Um, it, it, un, unrelated uh, to uh, to research, so it it is it is not the challenge the word challenge that is interesting for us. So there th these words are all unrelated in the sentence. So this sentence is not uh, is not selected at all. Well, and this is the last sentence. Uh, is it the last sentence? Uh, maybe I uh, there. The new model. Yeah, I think this is the last sentence. So it, this is it. So we have done the analysis of all the sentences of 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 this um, uh, of this um, uh, text. And so as a summary, I can say that what are the relevant output types which you have to look at when you want to analyze uh, the results of analysis. So it is the overall sentence type labels, which can be impsent, summary sent, or impsummary. Or, so these are the important sentence types and sent it is for sentences which, which, which don't have any in, uh, salient status in the grammar. And so you have the names of the, uh, the, 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 the overall uh, name of the kind of sentence, and here you have uh, the, um, uh, its features, uh, which uh, uh, the features which have been uh, mapped into the words used in the uh, in in echo writer like old and temp start is background and emphasis i don't remember what it is but maybe it's emphasis still emphasis so this is one one important output that you should look at then you should look at the key search word dependencies because these are the dependencies that have been picked up by the parser at that point as carrying the rhetorical meaning. And these are based on the, the Stanford parser dependencies. And there may be a problem with this. If, if you don't find an important uh, a key search word dependency in the output where, where you should find one, then you should investigate why. Is there, first of all, is there a, a Stanford parsa dependency? Is there a problem with the features of the words? So you look at, at uh, uh, the dependencies of the Stanford parsa. Um, and uh, then you should also look at the, the, the word features because uh, there might be a problem with the word features. And in, uh, if, if there is a problem, you should either add a word or add a feature or, uh, yeah, so, or add some other rule to, to, uh, uh, to add a new analysis. Or also you can see may, may, maybe there is a wrong rule. Maybe a rule is not uh, specific enough. 
maybe it is too specific. So here you, you, you can work, work after that. But what, what are, what, so these are the important elements to look at, the sentence type, the key search for dependency, the Stanford puzzle dependencies, and um, the word features. Yeah, so I think that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much, Agnes. Thank you. So we're looking forward to the next training session. Yeah, yeah. So the next section will be about the reflective puzzle. Oh, that'll be great. Yeah. Oh, oh, Simon, you're back. <laughs> oh, so quick. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's fantastic. So, Thank you. I'll, uh, so, I'll, stop, I'll stop recording now. Uh, okay.